police shooting in Denver leads to a ban on food trucks in parts of downtown. Now some are calling that unconstitutional. We break down the pushback. Plus, students are heading back to school, putting lots of young drivers on the road. So we have to prepare them for what they're about to do. The different driving rules they need to follow. A federal judge wants to reveal some parts of an affidavit used to search former President Trump's home, when we could see some of the evidence. It includes a roadmap for the investigation as it stands right now. And the Broncos are on the road for week two of the preseason, but don't expect to see any starters take the field. New at 11, Denver's ban on food trucks in parts of downtown could be unconstitutional. Denver police aren't letting food trucks operate in this shaded area. It's to try to clear out crowds out of downtown and was put in effect at the end of July following a police shooting in Lodo. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta reports on why a law firm isn't happy with that decision. There are no longer any food trucks in the Lodo neighborhood after the shooting where police injured six innocent bystanders. Weeks ago, we told you that food truck owners, they were really upset about the city's decision to no longer allow them to set up here. But now a law firm is saying that choice could be unconstitutional. Our partners over at the Denver Post reported lawyers with the Institute for Justice, which is a Virginia based nonprofit law firm, sent Denver City Council members a letter Wednesday urging them to repeal that ban. The ban bars food trucks from parts of Lodo, specifically on Friday, Saturday and Sunday nights. The letter goes even further, offering to work with leaders to change city rules that better meet the goal of keeping people in the area safe. The decision to ban the trucks was announced right after the shooting, but the city says it's been in the works for a long time. The ban itself, that was the work of both DPD and the Transportation Department right here in Denver. But ultimately, the firm's lawyers said they decided to send the letter to Denver City Council members because they have the ability to overturn it. In Denver, I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7. Now, Denver police released body camera and surveillance video of that shooting in Lodo earlier this week. Officers opened fire on a suspect late last month who had a gun injuring six innocent people. Now, we haven't heard from DPD since they released that video. A grand jury will decide if the three officers involved will be charged. One of the relatives of the victims in this Green Valley Ranch arson is suing the three teens charged with starting it and their families. Five family members in total were killed in the fire. It happened two years ago. One of the suspected teens, Gavin Seymour, is in court today for a motions hearing. They're in recess right now, but this afternoon, a judge will decide what witnesses and evidence can be used in a trial. Another teen, 18-year-old Kevin Bowie, pleaded not guilty and will go to trial in December. A man accused of sexually assaulting a student in her dorm room is still on the run from police in Boulder. Police say the suspect knocked on the student's door at the Williams Village North Wednesday night. They say he grabbed her and assaulted her. Now the suspect here is described as a white college aged man with dirty blonde hair and is approximately six feet tall. Anyone with any information is asked to call the number there on your screen. President Joe Biden will host a White House summit next month targeting hate-fueled violence on American democracy. The United We Stand Summit will feature officials, faith leaders, and civil rights groups. Biden will give a keynote speech where he will lay out his vision for a more united America. The summit will also focus on his administration's actions to reduce gun violence. A federal judge in Florida wants to reveal some parts of the Department of Justice's affidavit used to search former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. That document likely has information about the investigation into the former president and what prompted them to ask for that search warrant. As Zareen Shah reports, the judge is giving the DOJ until next Thursday to share what should be redacted. The federal magistrate who approved the search warrant allowing the FBI to seize allegedly highly classified documents from former President Donald Trump's home now says he is open to revealing some parts of the affidavit that justified his decision to take that unprecedented action. He understands that the public is going to likely be entitled to some parts of this warrant application and its affidavit. On Thursday, the federal judge weighed arguments from lawyers representing media companies, including ABC News, who believe the public should be able to see the affidavit. 
and the Department of Justice who want the document to be kept sealed because the investigation is still in its early stages and it contains key details about the probe, including their next steps and could potentially compromise national security. In court, DOJ also said they are very concerned about the safety of the witnesses. But the lawyer for the press pushing back on the Justice Department's position. But it is not the government's job to tell the public what is meaningful in terms of the release of its own information. The magistrate, a former federal prosecutor, says the process of redacting the affidavit will be a considered and careful process. And he gave the Department of Justice until next Thursday to submit what they believe should be redacted. He said he might offer his own redactions to the affidavit if he believes the government is concealing too much. He added he will allow the department to appeal if they disagree with what he thinks should be made public. But the one side that won't have any say in that process is Donald Trump's. The former president has said publicly he wants the full affidavit revealed. But his legal team did not take a position on the affidavit in court, choosing instead to only be observers. So when will the former president find out which parts of that affidavit will be revealed? Well, the same time as the rest of the public, it could take a while before that happens. Zorin Shah, ABC News, Washington. Colorado's unemployment rate is now below pre-pandemic levels. The state says it fell one-tenth of a percentage point in July to 3.3 percent. This is the lowest since February 2020, when it was 2.8 percent. The state's labor force also grew by 1,700, but the share of people participating in the labor force stayed steady at just below 70 percent. That's also the highest since March 2020. Kids in Denver go back to school on Monday, so Denver police will be increasing enforcement in school zones, making sure you're not speeding through them. Officers are also reminding you to watch out for more people walking or biking on sidewalks. They want drivers to stop for buses that are loading or unloading students and also watch for school crossing guards. One more thing, don't pass stopped vehicles because they could be waiting for kids to cross the street. A new school year also means more traffic around schools and a lot more younger drivers behind the wheel. In this week's Justice with Jessica, Denver 7's Jessica Crawford looks at the different rules that teen drivers have to follow. Getting that driver's license can really feel like a taste of freedom. And if teens want to hold on to that freedom, there are some rules that they have to follow. One big rule is making sure that they don't pack their car with their friends. When you're a new driver, starting your car can feel like you're really starting your life. I mean, if I had my license, I'd like to drive up into the mountains and go hiking by myself. That'd be nice. Sophia Tanner is learning the rules of the road before she heads off to college. Charles LaMonica at Mile High Driver Training is making sure she's road ready. <laughs> I raised six kids and, and uh, it's, it's a nerve wracking thing when you have to let your child go into a car. As new drivers take to the roadways, it's important to remember that laws are different for teenagers than they are for adults. In Colorado, generally licensed drivers under 18 can't have any passengers under the age of 21 for the first six months. In the next six months, they can have only one passenger under 21 and they can't use their cell phones while driving or they could risk losing their license. We're checking our inside rear view mirror to see any vehicles back here. With classes resuming, it's important for drivers of all ages to remember that not everyone on the road has a lot of experience behind the wheel. I find it really difficult to change lanes because I'm never like totally positive if it's safe to go, so that's something I'd like to work on. Most of them are very excited, um, but you know, you get a mixed crowd, some of them truly aren't ready yet. Uh, and then you get the ones that are all about learning and, and getting out there and doing it. Teens with a permit have to have an instructor or parents in the car with them. La Monica says that adult should be ready to help support the young driver. We work with them heavily during that first year with a permit because let's face it, once they get a license, a parent's not going to be in the car with them. So we have to prepare them for what they're about to do. In a teen's first year of having a driver's license, they do have a curfew, so generally they can't be on the roads between midnight and 5 a.m. In Denver, I'm Jessica Crawford, Denver 7. We're now less than 24 hours from Broncos preseason game number two. 
No Russell Wilson, few if any starters will play. The Bills, their opponent, meanwhile, say they will play their starters a healthy amount, meaning we could see Von Miller lining up against the backup Broncos offense. Josh Johnson will get the start at QB for the Broncos. Denver coaches talked about what they expect to see from both sides of the ball. They're pretty good defense right out the gate. I think, you know, for, for everything, we want to do what's right versus those guys. I mean, it's another def defensive front compared to what we see every day. So I think we'll get great work on that, um, being able to go after a four down front. Um, but we're going to try to mix it up as much as we can, whether we're throwing the ball or running the ball. But we just want to see both be efficient. It's a great opportunity for them to play against the best, you know, Josh Allen and some of those starting receivers and linemen. And uh, so they should all relish that opportunity. Denver 7's Troy Rank will be in Buffalo for the game. Kickoff is 11 a.m. Mountain Time. You can see his coverage all day tomorrow. And later today on Denver 7 Plus, Troy and I sit down to break down what he's looking for on Saturday. Well, the countdown to ski season is on. Yeah, it is already. Still ahead, resorts and stores gearing up for the season that's only a few months away. Plus, a crisis at the U.S.-Mexico border. Thousands of migrants are illegally coming to the U.S., and some border communities are taking action to tr stop feeling so overwhelmed.